Welcome to the Footy Forum. Uh, today we're here, going to take you through to the UEFA Champions League draw live reaction. Part of our live series, we'll be taking you through live matches, live draws, and live reactions to everything that's going on in the football world. You, uh, Morgi, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this draw. Um, hoping one day to see my boys in, probably within the next five, ten years. I'd love to see Leeds United in the draw. Even you, we take Europa League, mate, but yeah, one day. Yeah, I could see it. No, I, lo I love these draws. I would have been more excited, to be honest, if I had been actually in the draw. Uh, last two years, I've been able to uh, be excited about Red Star. Sort of an Azueza being in the draw. What happened but to them this year? They lost oh. to a team called Ammonia from Cyprus, who's actually a good team for Cyprus. Should never have lost. Our team's weaker. So Ammonia, yeah, they, they lost to Olympiakos, um, didn't they? Just But... I've always had, I had a team called the Money in my Sunday league. It, it does. It sounds like a disease, doesn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. It sounds like something you'd catch. Ammonia, ammonia, bro. That that is a disease. Ammonia. Yeah, but ammonia, pneumonia. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. It's like a little strain of. It's like pneumonia, but worse. Yes. <laughs> Zvezda's well playing tomorrow, but let's get back into it. Yeah, here it is. We got twenty. We got just over twenty minutes, um, before the draw actually happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and run through a couple of things with you. Um, for those of you who don't know too much about how the draw is actually put together, we're going to try and lay that out for you guys. Um, for anyone that does, feel free to watch or feel free to skip to um, the actual draw. So it's up to you guys, but we're going to also talk a bit about, um, you know, what groups, hypothetical groups, you know, which ones would be difficult, if there's any some dark horses um, around um, and who, what teams should be looking for, which teams should be trying to be avoided ideally. Things like this. Um, so we're going to go through that now. And I would um, suggest, even if you're aware of what's going on, you're, you're an avid follower of the Champions League, still tune in because you're going to learn a lot more about the procedure and how it works. And there's a new thing that came in this year. Uh, well, it's not new, but it's, uh, it's even more specific to the TV rights and what teams can be in what zones. And we'll talk all about that. So, yeah, I think we can get right into it, explaining, first of all, how the Champions League is going to work this year. It's almost all the same the only difference is really in the the dates of the tournament so i can go ahead and talk about that again 32 teams 26 teams directly qualified right from their leagues and then um six teams were granted the last six places over the last few days in the playoffs the only real difference here is is that prior uh, seasons they had uh match days one and two a week apart Match days three and four a week apart. Match days five and six, like little little monthly zones, September, October, November. Now, in, in the, into December, but now what they're doing is they're doing three match days, three weeks in a row, and then doing a break, and then doing another three. So, obviously, why they're doing that, just to condense, because they're starting way later than they usually would. Eight groups of four, as usual. The top two go through to the round of 16. Third place teams, all of them will go to play – Spring football in the UEFA Europa League, round of 32. Fourth play teams finish their, their uh, run in Europe for this year. That's pretty much it. Okay, Morgi, so now you can take us through to the and, and show us the pots, who's in which pot, and, and how it works on that side. Yep, so the way the, way the pots work, because, I mean, you're probably looking at the pots and thinking, why are teams like Seville and Zenit um, in pot one when you've got much better teams in pots two and three, for example? So... The way the pots work is the first two teams to go in there immediately are the Champions League winner and the Europa League winner. So there you've got Bayern and you've got Seville. And then the next six um, to go in are based on um, the, the winner or the champion of the leagues of the top six countries based on coefficient. So I'll quickly explain what coefficient means. It's just the way UEFA ranks and scores um, both countries and individual clubs. So the countries one is a combination of all the clubs in that country and how they do um, each year in Europe. So in the Champions League and in the Europa League. And then for the individual clubs, it's just based on their, their own achievements um, in terms of how they do in group stage and then in the, the knockout rounds and so forth. Um, so you take the top six countries and you take the champion from each of those countries and that makes up your pot one. So I'll just go through them quickly. So you've got Spain, um, obviously Madrid there. Uh, champions of Spain and then uh, England after that where you've got Liverpool and then this is the interesting one so then third you have Germany who the champions were obviously Bayern Munich however there's some overlap there 
because they were also the Champions League winners. So rather than having the top six, because you can't do it for Germany, because Bayern are already in there by default, you then move on to the seventh, which I'll come to. So then fourth, you have Italy. Um, so obviously you've got uh, Juventus there for Italy. And then next, you've got France in fifth. Uh, you've got PSG there, obviously. And then that explains why Porto are there, champions in Portugal, who are the sixth-ranked country with, co- with their coefficient. And then, as I said, because Germany um, can't be done in this way, because uh, Bayern are already there through the Champions League winning, um, Russia then go in there. So that's how Zenit have ended up in pot one. Um, and if it was the same with the Europa, then you would have gone to eighth, which were Belgium. Um, but that is not the case. Pots two through to four are just simply done by going through the club coefficients um, and just taking every club um, that is in the Champions League this year um, and just going all the way through the list until you fill pots two through to through to four. Um, so believe it or not, that's why Shakhtar Donetsk are actually in pot two because they actually rank 12th um, in coefficient, which to some people might be surprising. Um, but they have a decent amount of success in Europe, more so in the Europa League. Um, so it's not like if you're in the Champions League and you do not as well as a team that does better in the Europa League, you get scored better. It's just based on your success in Europe. So if you do really well in the Europa League, you're likely to be have a better coefficient than teams who don't do so well in the Champions League. Um, so yeah, that's essentially how it's filled. So Jovan, do you want to talk a bit how the actual draw itself then works? Yeah, so let's go back to like we have four pots each with eight teams in them and obviously a group will be comprised from a team of every pot uh they'll start with drawing the first pot all the way down to pot four um just some things to note um as most of you will know you cannot have in the same group two countries uh two teams from the same country so that's right off the bat you cannot have two teams from the same domestic league. So we all understand this is a little bit of confusing for for a lot of the neutrals, uh, but it's basically due to TV deals and UEFA not wanting all the same teams from the same league in the same country to play on the same match day. So what they're looking for is equal amount of teams to play in the groups A through D, which is the red zone, and groups E to H, which is the blue zone. So uh, example, England has four teams in in this year's competition. The idea is they want two English teams to be in zones A through D, the red zone, and two uh, English teams to be in the blue zone, E through H. So the idea is that applies through all countries that has more than one co- uh, club in the competition. So if you look at uh, Ukraine that has two clubs in the competition, the same rule applies where uh, Shakhtar Donetsk, if they're drawn into the red zone, well, Dynamo Kiev only have four options, and that will be the blue zone, and the groups are E, F, G, and H. Perfect. Yeah, so now we've got about 10 minutes uh, until the draw. So we're going to have a bit of a look at what sort of you know, potential groups could happen um, and which groups would be quite tough, which ones would be easy. Um, so first, we're going to look at a couple potential groups that are going to be really tough, that if you're in that pot, four even pot three who are you who are you looking to avoid and we're obviously going to try and factor in the consideration um of what Jovan just mentioned that certain countries can't be in the same group or section um as each other so um i think obviously if you'd agree Jovan, the champions league winners by munich look really dangerous yet again yeah um, and look like a force to be reckoned with yeah no i would agree i think they're a team that no one wants to be in the same group as I think just before we go into it, side note, um, the only uh, political conflict in this competition, as has it been for a while, uh, teams from Russia and Ukraine cannot be drawn in the same group. Okay, so we'll see that. And we'll mention it as the draw goes uh, along, uh, how that affects the draw. But just know uh, you cannot have um, Shakhtar Donetsk playing uh, Lokomotiv Moscow, for instance. Yeah, and that may come up a bit as we go through this. So... I would say uh, Bayern Munich, a uh, really tough team. And then who could you still get? If you get Bayern, who do you then you're looking at pot two and you're thinking, please, God, no. I would say Man City. I would say Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. So you really want to be avoiding those clubs, ideally. So I think, yeah. So obviously, just a reminder, you're probably looking at Leipzig. So because uh, Bayern would be in that hypothetical group, 
you couldn't get Leipzig. So the teams you want to avoid really are those three Italian teams of Inter, Lazio and Atalanta really. Um, and then the next, probably the next hardest team that I would want to avoid is still champions of Spain, I would say, Real Madrid. As a reason, Spain have the top coefficient. Um, and Barca and Atletico, as we've just mentioned, you know, go into that. But I think Real are a real big driver um, of their score. So I'd say Real Madrid are a big one you want to avoid. Now, the only positive to getting Real Madrid, I would say, is you then don't get Barca or Atletico. But you still obviously have Man City in the picture there. Um, and you also have the potential of now getting Dortmund, who are a really good club. Obviously, yeah. hang on to Jane Sancho as well. I, I No, I, I agree. I agree with all those points. I think looking at it reversely now and, and, and seeing if you're in pot four or three and you're really looking at having some luck, uh, some luck in this draw, in my opinion, as many will say, you want to be in the groups where uh, Porto and Zenit are, which is, is fair points because they are definitely the weaker sides in pot one. I would honestly go for Sevilla because of what you kind of touched on there is when you draw Sevilla, then you avoid all the Spanish teams in pot two. And in, in theory, you could get a, you could get a very favorable draw. Uh, so if definitely, if I'm looking at who can I get some luck in, in uh, if, if, you know, you look at Ferenc Varos or Istanbul, Bashakshir, those teams will be looking at, can we draw, um, Zenit, can we draw Porto? Can we draw Sevilla? Which I think would be actually a favorable draw. Um, oh, definitely, definitely. And the only thing about Porto is that if you do get Porto, you're still open to any of those teams in Pop Two, and that's going to be tough. And then an, an issue with getting Zenit, as you've mentioned, because of the conflict, you then can't get Shakhtar, who are probably the easiest team in group in Pop Two. But remember, the things. We're doing all these hypotheticals, but things can change so quickly because by this point, Shakhtar might already have been taken out the pot. So that may not even be a factor. So we're considering all these factors based on um, the whole draw. But by the time your, your number's called, your team comes up, it might look very different based on what's been picked out so far. If Juve, Juve and Dortmund get drawn into the same group, you're then able to avoid all of those tough teams in pot three. Um, so, and I would say those are the Italian sides and Leipzig. So there's two ways to look at that. A, Juve and Dortmund could then have a very, very straightforward um, group, exactly. And you should be looking at one of those groups where you have those two teams battling for first and then third and fourth have very little to play for, apart from obviously trying to get into Europa potentially. Um, but, you know, on the flip side, you've got a team like Marseille who aren't too bad sitting in pot four and would look at that, you know, maybe think we could, we could try give this a crack because they haven't got necessarily a team to worry about in pot three. Um, but it's just about, can they pick up some points against UV and Dortmund, especially at home? So to, to that point, let's look at pot three and let, I'm going to basically uh, name the uh, teams in each pot now, uh, just so we're aware. Um, but let's look at pot three and say, what team do you think is a dark horse and what team do you think of the pot three teams that can actually really have a go at qualifying uh, through the group? I mean, if I'm looking at it, I can definitely, you know, depending on the draw, I would say Inter. Um, Atalanta, how well they did last, last uh, season. Uh, Leipzig, of course, has to be in there. What do you think? I, yeah, I, I think Leipzig... Um, are probably the most dangerous team in that group. They, they're very strong in domestically as well, um, trying to start competing for the title in Germany. Um, so I think, I think Leipzig are a dangerous team. And I think in terms of the Italian teams, they're strongest. I think it's still Inter, I would say. Um, so there's definitely teams in there who will be hoping for a favourable um, draws in terms of the first two pots that could give them a real shot. Let's let's look at pot two. Some real um, some real exciting teams in there who could definitely um, compete. You've obviously got Man City, who, despite all their domestic success, leagues, cups, everything, are yet to crack it in Europe. 
not getting past the quarterfinals. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that sounds right. I think, honestly, the way you look at this, you have to take it one stage at a time. I think any team that sees Man City come out of the hat and you're in the same group, it's not not a great thing to see. Uh, yeah. I think they should get through the group. No, no problem. When I look at that, I think, okay, what team could I see not finishing in the top two? And there's not many, uh, but two teams that I see right off the bat are um, Ajax and Shakhtar. Yeah. That either, A, opens the door for a team in pot three to really grab that second spot, potentially first. You know, a team like Leipzig, I don't see why they can't win a group, 100%. Especially um, like those bottom, like Zenit, Porto, and Sevilla. Yeah, but you take a team like maybe um, Salzburg um, or if Man United and Kiev, uh, Dinamo Kiev, go together. Um, that maybe opens the door for an interesting battle between three teams for that second place. You know, if you've got maybe Man United, uh, Dinamo Kiev, and a team like uh, Muchen Gladbach, maybe. And then you've got an interesting competition there for those um for that second spot no for sure i think yeah you you mentioned man united i honestly think that they could be another team that that might not be able to crack top two um but when it comes to the other teams barca atletico city dortmund chelsea they should all have teams that can get to the group um but let's let's take it into group pot four because pot four is an interesting one and and quite often, you know, pop four kind of are, are the wild cards and they don't really get too much respect in terms of teams that actually get through to the round of 16. That what they, they need the, the draw to go in their favour. And that's why this draw is so important, because for them to have a chance, they need, as I said, the draw to go in their favour. At, at minimum, at minimum, they need to be avoiding those teams in pot three. They need to be getting a team like Shakhtar or Man United. And also, ideally, avoiding um, some of those big clubs and getting one of those teams like Seville, Zenit or Porto, as we've mentioned. And that's the only way they'll have a chance. So they'll be looking at this draw, in my opinion, realistically, as a make or break to whether they get through, even though they haven't even kicked the ball yet. I think this draw, for teams like that, this draw can determine their fate before they've even kicked the ball in the Champions League. And that was my personal opinion. You can see upsets, but I think when you have home and away legs, I think over six games, it tends to, to average out a bit rather than where you've got the knockout where, you know, there can be some upsets and away goals, things like that. I want to give, um, also, just want to give a little shout-out to Didier Drogba um, for winning the President's Award. We're just looking him accept what is a gorgeous-looking trophy um, there. <laughs> what I find amazing, look how shiny the floor is. Look how reflective. I don't know if anyone, if you guys have watched the draw or are watching the draw um, with this, um, the floor is so shiny. <laughs> you can literally see it. It's like a mirror. Wow, gorgeous. Um, Shout out to the janitor. Shout out to the janitor at UEFA headquarters. Where, where is the game? Uh, they're doing it in Switzerland? Yes, yeah, Switzerland, yes. Shout out to uh, the janitor and the cleaning staff there. What well, should we name him? Top job. What about Jeff? Jeff the janitor? Perhaps, perhaps. Jeff the janitor. Um, so shout out Jeff there. Let's talk about the, the elephant in the room. And it's who, and this is obviously tough, but who, who do you see taking the Champions League this year? That is a tough one for me. That is a very tough one. Can I see, can I see an, not necessarily an upset, but a team who haven't done it for a while doing it? Um, for me, I don't think this is the year that's going to happen. I think a big thing to look at um, is which teams have the most depth because what you've got to consider this year is they're trying, as you, you mentioned earlier with the way they're doing the group stage fixtures this round in terms of having three weeks in a row followed by one break instead of two weeks in a row with two breaks. Um, I think what you're going to have to consider a lot more is, and also then you've got the domestic competitions, you've got the cups and the leagues, and they're going to be playing slightly, um, with slightly less gaps. You look at Tottenham, who recently um, played on the weekend, they played the cup on Tuesday. They've got, they've got Europa League on Thursday. 
And you're going to see these big teams in, that stay in a lot of their domestic and got these European competitions needing to go quite deep into their squad in order to give, just to give players a rest because you're going to have injury concerns, things like that. Um, so I look at teams who have the most depth. I would say Bayern Munich are a team who have a lot of depth, a lot of young players who kind of, uh, somewhere between the first team um, and playing in the under 23s and the reserves, you've got young players who play first team. You've got Alfonso Davies is a good example, who I'm sure you would support as a as a Canadian yourself. Um, as yeah. a half Canadian, I'm also very proud of what he's achieving at Bayern Munich. Um, Real Madrid are a team who also um, just because they've just spent so much money, they've just got players players on the bench um Paris Saint-Germain Liverpool less so and I think this is something to consider Liverpool don't have as much depth I would say as the other big European clubs and they're also going to have a really tough um fixture yeah. list a lot in of their domestic competitions the two yeah the FL Cup like right now like teams like our, our today Arsenal Liverpool playing today and like you're playing crazy amount of games in a month like upwards of you know nine games ten games a month which is even more sometimes which is crazy um so yeah i mean that's a good point my question is and every year i ask the same question can city this year do it because you know that's the project you know that's the next step for them they're obviously going to want to uh change fortunes in the premier league because they definitely have kind of lost that crown um, but the Champions League definitely is the goal for the, for the majority of that group. So can they do it this year? Um, I don't think for them the draw is that important because they should be expected. Even though they're not in pot one, they should be still expected to, expected to get through. doesn't matter if they have the group of death. They have a team that should be able to get through the group. So this draw, I think, is less important for them because, if, you know, quite frankly, if they don't make the top two in whatever group they're in, massive failure. Um, so I agree, and I think I think Man City are a team where, and you look at and you say if they get the right sort of teams in their group and they get the right fixtures in the knockout. But at the end of the day, if you think Man City should win the Champions League, then you should look at those teams and you should think, yeah, over two legs they can beat anyone. That's how you should really be looking at that. Um, and I think they can do it. And I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last last season, and as you mentioned, last season they had a great opportunity because they'd already lost the league, so they could really put all their chips yeah. Yeah. into winning Europe. And they also had, it depends how you look at whether you say it's an advantage or disadvantage of that big break as well. Um, so their players weren't necessarily too tired or anything like that, but it tend, obviously didn't work in their favour, obviously going out with a big upset. But... Yeah. Yeah. What I would say is even more in their favour this year, and I, as I kind of just discussed, is the fact that teams with the most depth are going to be more likely to succeed. Uh, and I think Man City are a team with a lot of depth. Uh, yeah. And they're able to go quite deep into the bench in terms of their attack defence. They brought on, um, I don't remember his name, but a 17-year-old um, the other day against Leicester. <laughs> Not a great result, but my point is they've got players who sit on the bench, you know, first team quality players on the bench, maybe even in the reserves. And then you have all these young players coming up as well that they can throw into the mix. So they've really got a big bunch of players to pick from. And I think that can make the difference. And that doesn't necessarily mean playing those young players in the Champions League, but in other cup competitions, or perhaps in a, a league game, which one my class is a bit easier against Fulham or someone like that, they can put on more of these younger players and be confident they can still pick up the result and rest the players for those really tough games in Europe. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think they're going to have to to change. The, obviously, they, they didn't get a good result there last weekend against Leicester. Leicester's a good team. Uh, and we are going to talk about that a lot more in our, our following videos because this year it's going to be amazing, amazing in the Premier League in terms of following that. Quickly, before the draw starts, I just want to mention Dortmund. Because I think Dortmund are a really great side that people tend to sleep on. They've got some great young players in Sancho, in Haaland, um, in Reina. So 17, 18 years old. They've just picked up um, 
Bellingham, Jude Bellingham from Birmingham as well, who's going to be a wonder kid, I think. So I think Dortmund are a team not to sleep on and I think could do some real damage in this year's Champions League. They look really good. Um, so yeah, I think keep your eyes on Dortmund. I think they're my... I, I don't know if I'd even call them a dark horse because they are a really good side and people know that. But as far as dark horses go, I would say they could be my dark horse. Yeah. If you had to pick a dark horse... Um... A team that on paper you'd look at and say maybe not. Atletico, Madrid. Okay. Uh, I think that they, you know, they're they're a good team since getting uh, Luis Suarez. Man, like... That's His a, experience in the Champions League as well is a good point. Yeah, so I think... And I just like Atletico as well. So, I mean, if that means anything. I mean, it's, for me, it's, it's all theory until the draw gets done and until the ball gets kicked. But um, it's definitely... Interesting to speculate. So it looks like that time has come. Uh, Giorgio Marchetti. They're talking about Bayern Munich. They're looking at the teams in pot one, aren't they? So let's go through Bayern Munich, who won the tournament. Sevilla. All right, Didier Drogba is up. Here we go. And he will take the yeah, first ball. team out. I love the way they, they untwist the balls. Very fancy. Yeah, I'm calling it. I'm just calling it randomly. It's going to be Paris. Oh, Bayern Munich. Shock. Real Madrid. Group B. Group B. Interesting. Yeah. Go on, Jogba. Porto. Porto Group C. You were saying no. I look like Seville. It's Liverpool. Liverpool, Liverpool D. D. Let's see. Seville. Sevilla to Group E. So right now, I'm looking at Groups C and E to be ones that you might want to jump into. Definitely Group E. Zenit, Paris, and Juventus left for Groups F, G, and H. And it will be Zenit to Group F. Juventus. Juventus to Group G. Is there anything off the bat that you can tell from these groups in terms of the red zone, blue zone, Jovan? Um, well, again, so we look at it and we say Bayern uh, is in the red zone, so Dortmund cannot be in group... Well, uh, Dortmund will have to be either in group E, F, G, and H. So uh, if you're Dortmund... So you've got in E... So that means you've got a better chance, really... Um, in those so Dortmund will be quite happy because you can get Seville or Zenit now in groups yeah. E to H yeah. so teams like Dortmund will be happy um, who else have we got Real Madrid so Barcelona Atletico yeah so, so Barcelona are paired up with Real Madrid aren't they yeah so Sevilla was drawn into the blue zone so Atletico Madrid know that their potential rivals will be Bayern Real Porto or Liverpool so all very tough unless you get Porto um, the red zone is looking very tough, I would put it. Uh, so teams that have that conflict are, are kind of lucky. Again, Real Madrid. So Barcelona know that they are also in blue zone. So Sevilla, obviously they can't be in the group of Sevilla, but they can be group F, G, and H. Which teams know they're going to be in the red zone, though? Which teams are looking like now we've got to pray um, that we get Porto? Uh, will be, so Juventus... So, Inter are in red zone. We know that. Um, we know Marseille are also in red zone. Wow, that's going to be that's gonna be tough. So, first team out of the hat. Club Atletico de Madrid. And as we mentioned, they have either group wow. A, C, or D. Look, it's already there. See, I'm, sm I'm, I'm faster than these UEFA generators. Computers. <laughs> See, yes. Okay, there we go. So, where will they go? I said they could be a dark horse. Well, they really want Group C. If they group, group, group D, we're going to have a replay from last year because they beat Liverpool, remember? They, they knocked Liverpool Yes, out. big upset. A, with Bayern Munich. Oh, <laughs> that is tough. Oh, dear. Oh dear, that is not what you want as an Atletico fan. 
against the champions. To be fair, that's a nice, nice group. That's a group you want to avoid. Yeah. It's a nice group from a neutral. But Chelsea. that has group death potential. Chelsea have um, every option other than Group D, I'm pretty sure. E, wow, a Sevilla. Jeez. Ooh, okay. Okay. Chelsea fans probably buzzing about that. And what this means for Man City is Man City can only be in either Group B or C. So they can only be with Real or Porto for Man City fans. Well, it's obvious what you want, really, there. <laughs> Barcelona. Barcelona have uh, three options. Gr uh, group F, G, or H. Come on, put them in Group H. Put them in Group H. So they get P PSG and Barca. That would be a top, top group. G. You Barca, you end. G with Juventus. Oh, that is, gonna, that is tough as well. Wow, the Spanish club's not having it easy so far. <laughs> That's for sure. Ajax, Ajax. So they have, pretty sure they have all options, B, C, or D. I like the way that guy's just there to make the ball spin <laughs> with his hand. <laughs> That's this great for Kroni, you know, just dipping his hand in before. This could mean a lot to the city as well. D, with Liverpool. So Ajax and Liverpool, hey. very interesting. So Shakhtar, I'm pretty sure they can only do it B and C. Yeah. That's correct. And so this is also going to make a decision for Man City as well. So this will complete the whole, all pairings. See how I'm smarter than the machine. So Man City are hoping they see Real Madrid come out here. Yes. So Group B is what Man City want. And that would mean Dortmund would go to Group F with Zenit. Group B. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's big for Man City fans. Shakhtar. And Real Madrid fans, to be fair. Manchester City in Group C. Borussia Dortmund have two options. F with Zenit. Or I hope they go to with Zenit because I want Man United to have a harder go with Paris. Hey, United. F. So yes. You love it. Come on. Dormant, that's a really that's not bad for Dormant with Zenit, and then Manchester United will go and play with Paris. That's tough. So Manchester City will grow in Group B. We knew that before, so that's the benefit of listening to the Footy Forum. You know things before you wait for <laughs> comes up with them. If you get Leipzig in Group G, that could whew, that's Group of that be, Yeah, that would be. Interesting, man. That would be an interesting group to watch. Um, for all the viewers uh, from Ukraine, from Kiev, uh, just so you know, you are, can have so many from there starting off. <laughs> you know, we have a uh, group, the blue zone for you. And um, since Zenit is in group F and you cannot play Russian teams, the I, yeah, I would be very disappointed to not see a, a tough group with three good teams. So I'd love, I'd, I'm praying for Leipzig in Group G. Even though I do love Leipzig and I would love to see him do well, but I think they're good enough to get, get through Group G. So I look at Barcelona, a club that's a bit unstable right now, everything surrounding Messi, and I'd love to see Leipzig just come and just slap them off, which would be really, uh, I'd, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to see that, but... I'd also love to see maybe an Italian team, one of those three Italian teams we talked about in Group A. So that would be a tough group. That's where I was going. So Inter is, has to play in the red, red zone. So uh, with that point, they could very easily be in that Group A, which would you know then shift our attention to Group A in terms of group of depth. Because the way I look at it right now, and we've kind of talked about it already, but there's only two real candidates right now for group of depth, and that is G and A. So... If you get Inter, who could slot right into Group A, no problem. Um, you know, that's, that would be a, a tough one for them. They definitely wouldn't want to see that. And I think we're ready. Uh, bring on Giorgio Marchetti, godfather of the draw, to resume quite. Um, yeah, again, when we look at part three. I'm talking about Kiev there. Uh, talking about Kiev. Go and do your voice, go on. FC, uh, FC Salzburg. Red Bull Salzburg. Rosenbell Spall. 
Leipzig. My boys. From Italy, FC Internazionale Milano. Under on Antonio Conte. Olympiacos Football Club. Hopefully, Olympiacos do well. Lazio. What's the SS Lazio? No, not sure, man. SS. FC Krasnodar. Krasnodar. Krasnodar, first of all, shout out. They have an amazing looking stadium. I remember Zvezda played there a few years ago, three years ago, I think. Amazing looking stadium. For the, built for the World Cup, obviously. Um, and Atlanta. So, yeah. Uh, just small notes, Dinamo Kiev in the blue zone and Internazionale in the red zone. Just two two things we got to address and then we're ready to go. Okay. Group E. E. Wow. Group e. That group wow. is looking. That group is shocking, mate. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is, I mean, for Chelsea fans, that is that is huge because I think... Chelsea are a good team, but I think they need some time. They've got a lot of new pieces. They're figuring out their defence. I think this gives them a chance to figure that all out and still get through to the knockouts. Because I think you get put Chelsea in a tough group. Leipzig are next. Put Chelsea in a tough group, and I think they'll struggle. But I think they're going to get stronger as the year goes on. So that's big for Chelsea. H. H. Oh, okay. That is, I think... Mate, I hate Man United, so I'm buzzing about that because I think they could knock off Man United there. They could. Definitely. Yeah, that's a tough group, man. I mean, Man United, nor here nor there, but that's a tough group. Group H, wow. Group H is going to be yeah. tough. Atalanta, the first Italian team from what? Three. V. Okay, interesting group. That could be a very interesting group. Olympiacos. Olympiacos. Interesting. And they can go in group A, B, or C. No easy options really there, you must say. Yeah, but you want to avoid A. So group A, yeah. Without a doubt, to have a chance. And it is group C. Porto, Man City, and Olympiacos. Okay. Vinimo Kiev, only option is Group G. And oh, wow. Okay. Wow. That, um, well, that's good news for Juventus and Barca. Um, but disappointing from the death group perspective. Yes. That had a lot of death group potential. So that's a bit disappointing, really. Lazio will know as well. Lazio is going to be in Group F. I want, I want to see Group B. I want Inter and Group A. A. Oh, disappointing, man. Disappointing. Salzburg to Group A, Inter to Group B. I don't, I don't like that. And Lazio to Group F with Dortmund and Zenit. Uh, Dortmund, yeah, and Zenit. That's, that's actually a good draw for Lazio. For Inter, it's not a bad draw, but wow. Atletico Madrid and Bayern will be happy to see that. That's for sure. Oh, you know what? There's no real group of death Definitely. right now other than Group H. Group H has to be the group of death right now. Yeah. Do you think there are some teams who, especially in Pot 4, who would actually rather finish third than second? Because it's tough. It's tough one. Because you get, obviously, you get a tough game round of 16. And then just like that, you're out. Whereas if you drop into Europa, you have a decent shot. It's a it's a good question, and I mean, I, the one per, the one reason why I think they'd rather just because of what it means to be in the final sixteen of Europe, like Upwell, what they did like years and years ago, um, it, it's good for coefficient. Um, that's for sure because you get another, I think four points it is. Um, so uh, They're just facing the teams now. Lokomotiv Moskva, Olympic de Marseille, Club de Bruges. Borussia Mönchengladbach, Gladbach, 
Only reason I was able to say that because I could say Kimich, Kimich earlier. Uh, Istanbul, Başakşehir, team full of passion, you'd imagine. First time, newcomers, FC Midichlands. That was the goal, I, yeah. Oh, they're not going to show the penalty. Yeah, that was yesterday. Stade de Reims. And finally, Sleeping Giant from Hungary, Ferenc Varosi. Let's get right into it. This is where we close out the groups. Let's see where it is. Didier Drogba opening. The final pot. Olympic de Marseille. Okay, so as we said, they can only be in those first four groups. Group C. Well, oh, okay, they got it. Okay. Marseille. Don't let me down. Marseille. They're definitely my dark horse for the 16, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that could be an interesting group. That's going to be a very interesting group. Yeah. Those they need to it out. Yeah. Lokomotiv Moscow, who also. Okay, this is your team. So they're only Group A or D, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So group A. Yeah, maybe. But it depends. Like, it's just you need points against those big teams. Like, that's. The, yeah, see? Yeah. Wow. Look. Lokomotiv, Club de Bruges. Bruges, okay. F. Woo. Zenit, Dortmund, Lazio, Club de Bruges. That's not a bad, that's a really good draw for them. For Dortmund, I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, Lazio, Lazio could also do. Yeah. So I would say Lazio as favorites to, to come second there. Yeah, I would agree. I would say. Istanbul, Başakşehir from Turkey. Group H, yeah, there they are. <laughs> Istanbul, Başakşehir will join Paris. Man United and in Leipzig, we kind of talked about it. Maybe that's what that Clarence club wanted. Three big games. What's it going to be? Come, Lutz. E, wow. E. Jesus. Wow. Stade de Rennes will be happy with that. That's, yeah. I mean, that's going to be a... Not out of Stade de Rennes. Wow. Seville going to be tough, I think. No, they will. They will. Sevilla is not no joke, but Midtjylland. Midtjylland. B. Okay. Midtjylland. So that's not. Hmm. Tough. So now we know Munch and Gladbach will go to Group B, and Group G will have Ferenc Varoshi. Yeah, I mean, all of those options are quite tough, to be fair. Okay, we're done. To be. It's all over. Fed and Varos will have Barcelona, Juventus, and Dinamo Kiev in their group. Yeah. Jeez. Interesting. Should we make it interesting? Should we um should we go through each group and predict the final outcome of each group? Put a bit of money on it. Yeah, let's do it. Do a little point system. Okay, so uh, we'll do a minute per group. We'll start with Group A. We'll start now. Yeah, 50 bucks. So, okay, let's figure out points. Okay, sounds good. Do it, $50. Nice. All right, we got a minute. Minute on the clock, starting now. So, uh, you want to go first for Group A? I'll go first for Group A. I think simply as it was, I think as it was drawn, I think Bayern, Atletico, Salzburg, uh, Moscow, in that order. I can't see Moscow doing better than Salzburg, to be honest. So I think just as it is. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, go Bayern, Atletico, second, Mo Lokomotiv, third, and Salzburg, fourth. Interesting. Okay, Group B. You go first. Group B. Um, I'll go with Real Madrid, Inter, Shakhtar, and Borussia Mönchengladbach. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Real Madrid, Inter, Mönchengladbach, and Shakhtar bottom. Okay. I think. I think Shakhtar lose their advantage. I think their fans are n nuts. <laughs> so I think that's a big advantage they've lost at home. Okay, so Group C. So Group C. 
I think I think City will do it. I think City will finish top. Then it's tough. Then it's tough. I think Marseille. I'm going to say Man City, Marseille, Porto, Olympiacos. Yeah, I'm going to go Man City, Porto, Marseille, Olympiacos. Okay, okay, interesting. We've got quite a few conflicts here. Okay. Repeat. Uh, See, I, I fancy Liverpool, but I know you don't, you're not a big... Yeah, no, I think Liverpool will get, this is not as, as a group that will cause too much. I think Liverpool first, Atalanta second, uh, Ajax third, and Michelin for sure fourth. I'm going to I'm going to back Ajax here. I'm going to say Liverpool obviously first. I'm going to say Ajax second, Atalanta third, Michelin fourth. Even though I am excited to see Michelin, but yeah, that's how I it's going to be tight between Ajax and Atalanta. I think they're, they're head to heads and also their points against Liverpool are going to be the big deciding factors. Who do I think can get a result against Liverpool? I think Ajax more so than Atalanta. Okay, Group E, uh, all yours. I think my boys Chelsea are going to take it. I think Seville. I think Seville is someone to be taken seriously. They won the Europa League. Let's not forget. So, and that's how they got to pot one. So I would say Chelsea, Seville, Ren, and Krasnodar. Fourth. I'm going to go. Chelsea first, Sevilla second. Krasnodar third and Stunderland fourth. Okay, really? Yeah. Group F. Dortmund first. Second, Lazio. Third, Zenit. Fourth, Club de Bruges. That one, I, I'm going to have to match you there. I, I think as well, Lazio favourites for second. Yeah, I'm going to have to match you on that one. Dortmund, Lazio, Zenit, Bruges. Group G. Group G. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to take a gamble because I don't know them very much, but I just something about them. Um, if you'll pardon the pun, I think they'll be hungry. So I think <laughs> that was shocking. Um, so I think Juventus, but Barca. It's a shame because I would have loved to see a team try and knock off Barca because I think Barca obviously a bit they've lost Suarez as well Messi's up in the air but I think Juventus Barca I'm going to go Fern Varos and then Dynamo Kiev I'm going to go Juventus first Barca second Dynamo Kiev third and Europa League fourth Fern Varos and Group H I think we have to say Paris and Germain first uh, I'm going to go Leipzig second, Man United third, in Istanbul, Basak Shir fourth. I'm thinking whether I fancy Leipzig for first place. Yeah, that could be. But PSG are tough. Really good team. No, they're a great club. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of depth as well, more so than Leipzig. So I'm, I think I'm going to... S- my FIFA team. Go on, mate. Um, make, make it interesting, mate. Go on. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Leib first, PSG second, Man United third, Istanbul fourth. And that's all from today's video. Thank you for watching the UEFA Champions League live draw reaction for 2020 and 2021 season. Hope you enjoyed it. It's been a long ride and uh, definitely an interesting draw. Um, And tune in for more live and all things The Footy Forum.